look around me now And everything's changed somehow As it does 675,000 Clinton emails when they got Anthony Weiner's laptop in a search warrant. So one of the things, if I were the president, I'd do is demand the Anthony Weiner laptop and get it to the most trusted person in the military to take apart everything on it and then start using it. There's a lot that can be prosecuted. I have no doubt on that laptop. In in fact, I heard that the New York police officers who saw some of it, even though they're hardened investigators, literally had to go throw up. Angel, I must abide Wherever those demons hide Redacted stated that the children were all extremely hungry and urinated and defecated on the floor during the interviews. Redacted stated that the children also talked about other children in Washington, D.C., and stated that they were under the control of the game caller. Redacted. The pictures of the children with slaughtered goats was not a ritual sacrifice, but rather an attempt at a hands-on experience. Several mothers indicated that the robes being worn by the men were actually sheets the men wore during the slaughter to protect their clothing. The children had the experience to see where the meat comes from, an experience that most children don't get while they are growing up. Still I try. The process undertaken appears to have been a systematic response to local newspaper advertisements for babysitters, tutors, etc. A member of the finders would respond and gather as much information as possible about the habits, identity, occupation, etc. of the family. The use to which this information was to be put is still unknown. There was also a large amount of data collected on various child care organizations. The individual further advised me of circumstances which indicated that the investigation into the activity of the finders had become a CIA internal matter. The MPD report has been classified secret and was not available for review. I was advised that the FBI had withdrawn from the investigation several weeks prior and that the FBI Foreign Counterintelligence Division had directed MPD not to advise the FBI Washington Field Office of anything that had transpired. No further information will be available. No further action will be taken. My name is John Paul Rice. For the people watching that may not know who I am, I've been in Hollywood for about 20 years. I started my film career in Remember the Titans. Uh, worked at Senator International, later Mandate Pictures, under the producers who did Juno, The Grudge, Harold and Kumar, Stranger Than Fiction, and uh, eventually The Hunger Games when they went back into Lionsgate. When the Me Too movement started in 2017, I reached out to several of my female actress friends who were prominent in LA. You would know them by name. Many of them you would know by just their look because you go, oh, that was her in that movie or that movie. And I said, well, what about the children? What about the children? And, they, and the response was, we know, we know. But they were silent on it. And it destroyed me because it destroyed my illusion of what rights, human rights were, children's rights were. This is a child abuse system that we have been living in for a very long time and it's been allowed to go on. I worked there for 20 years. I saw shit that nobody should see. I didn't partake in things. It was just right in front of me, out in the open. These kids, when you see Britney Spears, when you see Amanda Bynes, when you see any of these young pop stars have meltdowns, that's not because they're famous. That's not because of the pressures of stardom and the money getting to them. It's because they're sexually abused and handed around like candy. Amy Robach from ABC News when she found out and was discussing in 2016 that they had everything from Virginia Guffrey, all of it, everybody who was involved, they had all the evidence. Their own lawyer said that when all is said and done, Jeffrey Epstein will go down as one of the most prolific pedophiles in all of history. And they buried that story 
to have access to the royal family, for which we now know Prince Andrew was implicated. We are faced with a crisis of consciousness among the leadership of our banking institutions, of our media corporations, of the Hollywood entertainment industry, of the music industry. This is not about a bunch of young women who were having sex with older men and make it about a bunch of perverts. They raped and tortured these girls. We found a network of pedophiles among a global network of people who were selling kids back and forth to each other, trading them like candy. This issue of human trafficking, which many people are waking up to today for a variety of reasons, is the issue that defines all of us in our time. The media corporations, the most powerful six corporations in the land, in the world for that matter, are all implicated in human trafficking of kids. Listen to what Ghislaine Maxwell said about the girls that she picked up in West Palm Beach's trailer parks. She was asked, what about the young girls? What are we gonna do to them? What, what's gonna happen to them? She said, they are trash, they are nothing. That's a direct quote from the New Yorker. Indeed, human beings are, in our youngest years, use the most among the most useless creatures in all of the animal kingdom. This is how they view children, through science. And there's another layer to it, but it's too unbelievable to believe. 5.5 million children every year are trafficked around the world. 5.5 million, most of whom don't live past age seven or eight. The predators are not just raping and having sex and torturing and beating these kids. They're murdering them for pleasure. If we are going to make it through this time with all the upheavals that are going to come, socioeconomic, racial, however you want to measure it, this is the unifying issue that the establishment will not give you a movement for. You're going to have to do it on your own. They will give you the Me Too movement because they can make it about hatred of men and weaponize it and make it political. They'll give you the Black Lives Matter movement because they can weaponize it and make it political. They can have Colin Kaepernick take a knee, divide the country, and he walks away with a check from Nike at a multi tens of millions of dollars NFL star level deal. We can have truthful art in this world. We don't need propaganda. Truthful art begins with the diversity of ideas and truthful information being disclosed. We can have beautiful films. We can have honest expressions in, that come from within us. The journey of art is to discover what is within you that is the unknown, which you follow a belief to find, but in that discovery there is the transcendent, which is what did I struggle with and come to confront within myself that I needed to release and share what the gatekeepers all know at the very, very top, not the executives, not the agents, not the managers, it's, it's like a banking institution. The person at the teller working with the customer does not have privy to the knowledge of the CEO and the chairman of the board and what they discussed the day before. They're just doing their job, right? So everybody does their job according to what they know. So Hollywood gets this, the word out through the studios, this is the kind of content we're looking for. But the gatekeepers at the very top are managers to make sure that we don't wake up. They control everything that we see and it is very important for them to do that because they don't need you and I starting to have new ideas about things that go outside of the orthodoxy of what they want us to know. So the reboots, remakes, prequels and sequels is like a holding pattern so that we keep retreading through the same ideas even though as humans our minds are to expand, to grow, to stretch, to reach out and we're in a time where we're trapped between everything that we're supposed to do. There's so much cognitive dissonance. It's a reflection of this whole system which preys on children. That is the number one Achilles heel of this entire time. Every single child born in this world is born with love in their heart. Every single one of them. You may want to pick off one or two percent. Fine. I'm going to give that to you. These are the kind of conversations that we need to start having 
in our own homes, in our own hearts. Because if we're ever to change this time, to never return to a time where our leaders that we elect, people who get appointed to boards and the heads of industries, do this shit to children. This is our consciousness doing this, unaware. This, this child sex trafficking issue is something that we're going to learn many, many things about over the next several months into years from now. We have a battle ahead. We are going to have a lot of human carnage that we don't see yet having manifested because of the horrors that have been sown into society and our children who are being summoned by this energy, this negative energy, this anger. And they are going to be pulled away from themselves even further and given a righteousness to act in the name of violence against their fellow human beings. They know that we come from a creator of heaven and earth. That is not a religious belief. That is why they do what they do to kids because it's the closest thing to God that we have on the face of this earth. Our love and care for each other is unbelievably powerful, more than their fear. They have to get you to consent and believe in them to make the whole thing work. Your love and your care for yourself and the people that let love you back. Most importantly, every single child that you come across, every single one of them, even not your own, that you give an act of love to is like a deposit of gold in the bank for their future. It is magical to watch a kid pop up the moment you give them attention. Very rarely as adults do we do that because we're so busy and we've got so many filters, but children are open. 